they were taking ASOP money, um, which is Advanced Special Operations Techniques money. So that's money that's specifically for mission purposes that they have access. And apparently um, those guys plus the Marines were involved in taking this money and using this money to buy diamonds and using it for hookers. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have Matt on. Um, he is on a mission to get justice for his uh, high school friend, Commander Price, who was murdered uh, while he was serving as a commander of SEAL Team 4. Today we're going to discuss uh, one of my buddies that um, I spent some time a group with. He and I were in sniper school together, uh, Logan Melgar. Um, I remember when I got the word that he had been uh, murdered uh, in Mali. I was at SWIC. Uh, he and I went to sniper school together. Uh, awesome dude. Uh, everybody over a third group loved him. But when, once I found out what had taken place, I'm not going to lie, it, 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 it put a bitter taste in my mouth towards the SEAL teams, right? But, Matt, if you don't mind, I know you've been doing a lot of research uh, trying to create a spider web of activities that's taking place around your uh, your buddy, Commander Price. If you don't mind sharing exactly <clears throat> what you've learned about Logan and how he was uh, uh, murdered while serving in Mali and the cover-up that took place. Well, first of all, I apologize um, that I'm, I'm sorry that you had to go through kind of what I'm going through, but even probably more on a personal level with, with Logan and being a friend of yours and um, someone you served with and, and battled with and um, you know, Joe was a good buddy of mine from high school, but we weren't best friends by any stretch of the imagination. And um, we were classmates and we respected one another, but we didn't have the same bond that I'm sure you and Logan have. So I do uh, feel for your loss. But, you know, for me, <clears throat> Job's investigation opened up sources to me that I didn't know existed. Um, and I get information on just about anything I want from these people who are in the community. Some retired, some still active. Um, who were able to provide uh, really good intelligence to me on certain cases. I knew about Melgar. I, I had uh, sources that tried to give me information years ago about it. I just wasn't, it wasn't on my radar because I was really focusing on Job. And, um, you know, it wasn't until I realized, um, I, I knew about the brand and I understood what the brand was doing, but I didn't really understand the connectivity between incidents and how each incident leads to the next and how exposing one exposes all. And so when, when you and I decided to have our, our conversation today, and then Melgar obviously being a friend of yours, it was important for me to get as much information as I could from my sources um, about the case that may or may not um, be news to you or to anyone else, but some of the stuff is very um, disturbing, to say the least. So Logan Melgar was a, a Green Beret from the Coast Special Forces Group who was uh, over in Mali, M-A-L-I, um, and was there doing doing some work there. And there were some SEAL Team 6 guys there and some Marine Raiders and um, doing special operations in that region. Um, <clears throat> Logan, and, and you can kind of testify to Logan's um, personality and his character, but from everything I've heard, Logan was um, a faithful man, uh, a man who had uh, convictions in his faith with God uh, and his family. Uh, he was a, a, a warrior on the battlefield. He was a brother who would do anything for one of his guys. And he was somebody you would trust and honor and respect. And I'm, I'm guessing you feel the same way about Logan. Yes. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So based on that knowledge, and, and you know, there's a lot of similarities between what happened to Logan and what happened to Job. Both were that kind of guy, right? So they're, you know, if you were to say Logan committed suicide, it probably would have taken you back and be like, yeah, he's not that kind of guy that would have done that. That's the same way I, I felt about Job. And, um, you know, Job was a, a Boy Scout kind of guy. If he saw something criminal happening, he would do something about it. If he saw something, somebody getting hurt, he would stop and he was that guy. And so was Logan by all accounts. So from what I was told is that he had observed some illegal shit going on between um, the two SEALs that ended up being involved in his death. Um, one guy with last name of Dedolf, the other guy with last name of Matthews. Um, they were taking ASOP money, um, which is Advanced Special Operations Techniques money. So that's 
money that's specifically for mission purposes that they have access to. And apparently um, those guys plus the Marines were involved in taking this money and using this money to buy diamonds and using it for habits and for hookers and other things, but they were taking large amounts of cash and, and benefiting personally from the theft. And, and Logan found out about it and um, was going to report it. So they, uh, he had the conversation with his wife, Logan does, before anything bad happens. And he pretty much says, you know, I saw some shit and I'm going to have to report it. And that bothered him that he had to do that. And this, so that that has been confirmed from the wife early on in the in the investigation into what happened, uh, that that conversation did take place. Um, he approached Deedolf and Matthews and, and the Marines and said, hey, I, I know what you're doing. I'm going to have to fuck off. I'm going to have to turn you in. And they tried to cut him and they wanted him to get involved in it and he refused. Um, you know, on June 4th, 2017, which is when the event happened, he was jumped basically by the two SEALs, Deedolf and Matthews. Um, they brought in a Mali national and had him naked and ready to, um, and they were, the Marines were taking video of all this. They wanted to basically create a blackmail video that was going to um, show Melgar doing uh, gay sex type stuff with this Mali national. And they were going to use it to bribe him to keep him quiet from uh, reporting them for what they were doing with the ASAP money. Uh, deed off had him in a chokehold basically a a uh, guillotine which is when the forearm is up against the throat and starts to cut off the airway and he fought back valiantly from everything I've, I've been told um, because he saw what was was happening um, he was then sexually assaulted anally with a broomstick which I don't think ever came out in public that information because they the story was it was a rough housing incident, um, which included MMA techniques, and he accidentally was killed. It was kind of the, the narrative that was put out in the news. Um, you know, this is the first time this type of, of, of technique was used to get somebody to shut up. There was back years back was a um, guy named Ensign Penny um, who was had something very similar happen to him, except they they had he didn't they didn't kill him. He committed suicide as a result of what. Um, they had him do, he got drugged and there was a bunch of other stuff going on, but he ended up killing himself because of the blackmail video that was created um, when he was drugged up, um, which is, you know, very similar to Anson, except they didn't drug up Melgar. Um, they jumped him and they were hoping to uh, get him to, to do the things they wanted him to do in the video. And unfortunately, um, through the, the choking of him and his resistance, they broke his hiatal. Uh, bone in his neck and he died um it was reported that prior to his death they had given him a trach and were trying to save his life by reopening an airway so that he could breathe um my sources are telling me that that trach was put in um quite a bit of time after he died and that there was no effort to try to to save him it was more to cover up to make it look like they were trying to save him which is you know kind of fucked up if you if you think about it that's once you realize you killed somebody now how's that, how do we make it look like we didn't kill somebody that it was accidental and that's kind of the the point that they were trying to um do is get that that type of environment that kind of story told now the difference in job's case versus melgar is that job's was on a in, a, in an area which was controlled by the navy the navy seals this was not. This was an area that wasn't controlled by the Navy SEALs. There was multi-branch operations going on there, and it wasn't <clears throat> anything that direct command people would be able to insert immediately and, and, and handle a cover-up. So I believe the reason why they weren't able to successfully cover this up and make it go away, which I would argue they kind of did since a lot of this information was never brought out, and the people that were involved never really did much significant um, time, and we'll talk about that as well. So it is pretty much a cover-up, um, you know, but the, it all stems from this illegal activity that was seen by Melgar and same thing with Job. I believe he saw illegal activity and was going to call it out. They both were then dealt with 
um, by the Navy SEALs that they caught and died. And, you know, Didolf, his trial was um, not until 21, which was like almost three years, three plus years later from when the incident happens, when the trial happened. He's found guilty, gets 10 years in prison, um, does about nine or 10 months, and they appeal his conviction, uh, his lawyers do, and he was, um, all, all charges were dismissed because they didn't, in his trial, it wasn't revealed that Matthews, the other SEAL involved, um, had taken a deal and that he was testifying against everybody. And that information was not brought to the jury or the, or the court's attention at the time of Didolf's trial. So he, the guy that did the actual murder, served about nine or 10 months and that was it. Um, the uh, Matthews, he did a year in military prison. Um, so he actually did more time than than the guy he had a deal to testify against. Um, Maxwell was one of the, the Marines involved. He, uh, he got three years um, of detention for negligent homicide and, and being basically a, a party to the, the event. And then uh, Gunner Sergeant Rodriguez got 90 days of hard labor and six months in jail. So nobody did any severe, severe time. Um, and what's even worse, and, and this goes back to the brand and how they do things, you know, like I talked about Job's wife and how she was all on board to figure out what's going on until she received the money and then stopped um, being involved. Um, you know, they, they're very good at ingratiating. And that's a pattern that we saw throughout um, all these different um, events that, that were suspicious in nature or criminal in nature or weren't exactly what they were being said to be is there's always an ingratiation component. And, I, and when we talk about Robin Neal, I'll talk about how he tried to ingratiate me. Um, you know, they, they will go after the wives, meaning they will try to reel them in, get them trusting them, offer them money, give them opportunity to go and be a gold star member of the, their, their, their group that goes out and give them the respect and the honor of being the wife of a, a fallen soldier or seal. And that's kind of their, their MO. Um, apparently the wife, Melgar's wife had gone to uh, the shot show. You know what shot show is? Yeah. It's uh, down in Vegas. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big um, law enforcement, military firearms, type huge event um, annually held. And uh, one of the companies that was one of the vendors there was having a, a like a masquerade ball kind of themed party in one of the rooms in the, the casino. And she was invited and she went and a man wearing a mask um, who uh, she didn't know, and but he was talking to her about you know, her husband being killed and how sad it was that he had been killed. And um, they were just, he was just chatting her up, but he had the mask on the whole time. Um and then that escalated to, you know, it's unfortunate what happened, but, you know, we need to keep the branches, the special operations community, we need to keep them, um, keep keep them from being angry at each other. Don't try to put a wedge between them and ask her to sort of back off on her pursuit of trying to, to find out what the truth was and um, get more details on her husband's death. And this is obviously before any of the trials had happened. Um and then he actually attempted to seduce her um, during this entire engagement. She rebuked it and the person left. And um, from what I've been told from multiple sources that the person in the mask was actually Adam Matthews, one of the co-defendants, um, who was one of the SEAL Team Six members. So um, again, that is uh, just going to the level of effort that they will go to try to keep the, the narrative contained and without having anybody really looking behind the curtain or digging too deeply. And they were able to always find ways into the information pathway, which is obviously, I talked about this with Joe, his wife was the person that had the ability to gain, gain access to information. She could make requests on behalf of her husband. I don't have that same luxury. His sister didn't have that same luxury. So with Melgar, you know, she would have all the access and ability to get information from the United States Army and the Navy, whoever was doing the investigation. So if you shut that that access point down, then the ability for any additional leakage 
is mitigated. So that's kind of part of the, the MO of what they do. And I just find the whole thing to be um, completely disgusting. Um, and again, if this was on the Navy base, I, I would guarantee none of the information that we know now would have ever come out. They would have found a way to suppress 99% of it. Um, luckily for the Melbourne family, that's not the way it ended up being. Now, do you think this is more, before we wrap this up, do you think this is more of a SEAL Team 6 problem, an overall Navy SEAL problem? Like, how do we fix this? Because this is some disturbing shit. Well, I, I do believe um, the most egregious stuff um, and the more frequently egregious stuff is SEAL Team 6 driven. Um, you know, Matt Cole's book, Code of a Country, talks about that deeply. Um, <clears throat> however, you know, Job wasn't SEAL Team 6. He was SEAL Team 4. And I know I've talked to SEALs who um, you know, told me that in their estimation that, you know, upwards to 60% of the SEAL uh, cadre, uh, the SEAL members are corrupted on some level, meaning they've done something that is um, either against regulations or illegal whether it's steroid use and buds and they get them using steroids early in the buds program now, and it's almost um, forth upon them. If they want to graduate, they're going to have to take uh, steroids. Um, so they get them early on to be, do something illegal. And those, everyone coming out of those buds classes are going to be leveraged. I'm sure um, to the guys that are doing cocaine or having massive drinking problems, getting arrested for, alcohol related offenses and make those things go away. And then now they're, they're being leveraged. Um, guys that are doing criminal activity over in theater who are doing, you know, drug trafficking or stealing ASAP money or killing people that don't need to be killed um, or killing their boss. Um, there's a lot of, I'm not saying it's all of the SEALs, but there is a large contingent of today's SEALs who are being leveraged or things that they may or may not know are as bad as it is. You know, these kids that are taking steroids and buds are doing it. They said, if you want to get through our training, you're going to have to do it. It's the only way to get through. Your body won't be able to handle it. You won't be able to hold up. You're going to quit. We don't need quitters. We need people that are you know, we're in the middle of the war on terror. We need to get people trained up and out there. And if you're all you wanted to be was a Navy SEAL and your Navy SEAL instructor says you should take steroids. Guess what? They're going to get the fucking jab in their ass. That's what they're going to do. Um, and they're they're recruiting guys that are a little less than uh, morally true, and and that their integrity is not necessarily at the highest levels. And and I don't know if I necessarily disagree with having those guys. You know, you need some guys that are going to swing axes and and hit people with hammers. No. Right? But, <clears throat> yeah, but those. Those guys need because at the end of the day, like we're not signing up for you know underwater basket weaving, right? right? We're not looking for choir boys, but there is a a component to this that still has to stay intact. Because I always preach that yes, we want those those guys with questionable morals and characters because that's what it takes to do the job. But you also need your Commander Prices of the world. You need your Logan Melgars to be that voice of reasoning amongst those guys but when the complete disregard for life exists because i'm not gonna lie like i had those similar guys like those within the green berets but at no point in time did we ever thought that killing one of our own was the answer you know what i mean we've had disagreements we've had guys do dumb shit to where we had to pull them aside and tell them yo like let's let's talk about this because that's like when i think of the brotherhood that's what I think of, right? You, you're going to have those guys that comes from, you know, questionable backgrounds, right? The guys that are willing to do anything you tell them to do without even questioning. But you also need a guy that is that voice of reasoning that's going to pull those guys aside and tell them, hey, this was a little, like, you went a little too far on that one, right? Like, you, you, you need to dial it back. But I can tell you right now, like, when I've had those conversations with my teammates, that their their reaction wasn't to wait till I go to sleep and fucking kill me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it was, oh, Jay has a point there. My bad, man. Like, 
I'll do better. Like those are the conversations that we have within special, like at least within the Green Berets, right? And I'm sure Ranger Bats the same way. You know, I've had a lot of buddies that are, you know, uh, comeback controller. Like those are the type of conversations that we have because when you think of the SEAL teams, when you think of Green Berets, comeback controllers, Delta, we recruit the same type of dudes. We truly do, right? But it's it's the leadership, it's the it's the culture, it's the community that fosters how a guy's gonna turn out. And if you have and if you've normalized, you know, murder in your own or cover ups, then those guys, that's how they're gonna grow up. And they're not gonna see a problem with that. You know? Yeah, I, I agree with that. That is that's spot on. And I think, you know, the, there's gotta be um, you, your, your job is to work in the gray. And, and when you're in the gray, the gray can turn back black. And you've got to make sure that the rails are in place so that you don't go into the black. Right? So there, there is a, there has to be, there's got to be a, uh, a, a left and right extreme barrier that stops everything from falling off the fucking tracks. And I think the SEALs um, have removed those barriers and they've allowed the, the width of, of, corruption to go unchecked because you know when and at the end of the day there's <clears throat> when you enter in money into the equation right nobody goes in the military to be rich um but there is there is guys that are the minute they get out and we're going to talk about one of them in a bit rob o'neill that will make millions off of a lot for for taking someone else's credit um for doing corrupt things and there are guys that have podcasts or companies that focus on leadership and um, or have books or had movies about them or part of TV shows as executive producers. And there's people making gobs and gobs of money off of lies and, and corruption. And when you allow that to be your pathway out of when you get done the seals and we're going to promise you a pathway, if you are one of us and you do things the way we ask you to do it, you may not be allowed to come back to us because we can't acknowledge that publicly that you're still welcome here, but we will help you when you get out to live a very good life promoting the shit that you learned while you were sealed. And, and that's where things go off the rails is when you've, you've given that, if you do this, all of this is yours. So it's like Satan tempting Jesus, right? So there's this, there is this, the parable that is, if you allow that to be, prevalent that will be the thing people strive for and and a chris kyle will make his family will make millions of dollars and he made millions of dollars off of his story which was not necessarily factual um everybody's story is not necessarily factual and and that is the um the power of the brand is to sell 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 Yeah, well, I appreciate you um uh, coming on and speaking about this, especially Logar, uh, especially uh, uh um uh, uh Logan. Um, we'll uh cover some of the figures that you mentioned here in the next segment. But uh, Matt, if anybody wants to reach out to you, where can they find you? Uh, then go to my website, mattkubler.com. Uh, Matt M A T T Kubler C U B B L E R dot com, or go just email me directly, Matt at mattkubler dot com. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it, Matt. Thank you, brother.